I'm Jimmy Chang, and we're here to talk about how to derive the law of sines for a spherical triangle. Now, the law of sines we all are, might be familiar with in you know standard trigonometry class, but when it comes to a spherical triangle, which is a little bit different, let's talk about how the law of sines is a little bit differently written here. So the formula for the law of sines for a spherical triangle looks something like this. Sine of lowercase a over sine of capital A is equal to sine of lowercase b over sine of capital B, which is equal to sine of lowercase c over sine of capital C. Now, you might be thinking in standard law of sines, you really have the lengths of sides over the sine of the corresponding angles. Well, there's kind of a relationship to that as well, but let's talk about the capital letters first. Capital A, capital B, and capital C are the surface angles of the triangle, which you might expect. So A, B, and C might be can be thought of as the angles A, B, and C, the surface angles. But in terms of lowercase a, lowercase b, and lowercase c, these correspond to the central angles of the sphere, which correspond actually to the arcs. If you think about the arcs of the sphere, we're talking about the lengths of those. So the sine of little a, sine of little b, and sine of little c, where little a, b, and c are the central angles, you're actually talking about the lengths of those particular uh, sides. So there are some parallels, but the, the notation here is a little bit different because you are adjusting the formula to the spherical triangle. So I'm Jimmy Chang, and that's how to drive the law of sines for a spherical triangle.